Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to illustrate the pylon work with building information modeling and how we can integrate the project data, including setting out with, with the uh, quality assurance, with quantity takeoff, and valuation, valuation work, and planning programming, and has built records. So let's see now how can we achieve that. Now, so let's have a look first at what we got in this model. So to start with, we got a few layers here, which is like a few surfaces. Uh, the top surface now, it is the existing ground level. So let's have a look at one of the elevations we got here to have a look at the, the ground, the existing ground level. As the operator take possession of the construction site, basically the ground level, it is uneven. And so it will be required to be reduced to a level where the piling rig or piling operator can perform perform their their, their work usually the it's called the commencing surface where it's usually called piling mat where it is it is a surface uh, where it is quite stable for the operator to carry out their work the next surface is called the piling uh, piles cutoff level the piling cutoff level is usually given by the design team and it is where the piles after it's been uh, driven or has been uh, bored uh, whichever technique is being carried out and, and classified by the design team it will be cut off to that level and then uh, and then a piling cap will be placed on top of that for the structure to transfer the, the load from the structure into the piling cap then into the pile itself so for now we're going to discuss uh, more about the process of the piling rather than we concentrate on the design so as so this is this is that's another level the other level is this level here where which is called the rock level or uh, the base level this level is where the piles is being designed to reach that level and as we said it's different sites different different layers of ground there and the reason of the whole exercise of piling is because the ground is not strong enough to withstand the loading from the structure design so this this um, the they call the, the the baseline or the rock rock line is where the piles need to be uh, driven or board to that level for example let's go this pile here so so this pile is will be will be penetrate to keep penetrating keep going until it will reach this level as we see in here and similarly to all all piles are have to be driven into that level uh, so the, re the reason the reason for the they could be a different levels for different piles is because this level the the rock level or the baseline it's not a, a flat level it's very so the pile keep be uh, driven down until it will reach this level so what makes the pile work uh, one of the most challenging activity in the construction project which is the unforeseen unforeseen element of the the, the pile and work for for example as we see in this model here uh, we see all these piles is being driven and some of them do not go to the plan like like this per, this particular pile is being obstructed by an object where we we don't know what that object is could be a piece of uh, rock or could be a metal from from a previous uh, history of the site uh, the the borehole investigation could not pick it up so usually the operator is prepared for 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 event like this 
by by having a machine standing by 360 to exhibit and remove the obstacle or the obstruction but in some occasions the, the, the obstruction is so deep it is it is um, not feasible to keep exhibiting to try to to uh, find out what's happened there and to remove that uh, object in a state in a state the, the the designer we will go back to the designer and we will recommend to install another pile or for example let's have a look here yeah this is the the plan the plan um, drawing now and in this location we would like to install alternative piles which will we are to avoid this uh, obstruction or this object uh, for for example let's say let's say uh, we we will have a, a pile there and one there one there to to replace all this now so here we got a group of piles around the object where we are trying to avoid this obstruction so looking back again to the well basically is we change now let's say we change uh, into the required level for the for the pile depending on the design so by responding to the unforeseen problems on site uh, with with the building information modeling the the designers the operators and the the will will collaborate to find the best solution and as well as we can have uh, an accurate records for example what we witness here we have a new position of the pile in uh, in terms in terms of coordinates as well we can we can achieve that as well so uh, let's have a look now and we'll see what uh, so we can for example we got this these are the the piles which we are just moved in and we can have coordinates specified there local coordinates and we can even have uh, global global coordinates to it with with all the details uh, available in in this in this model so now we integrated the setting out with with the with the model we integrated the as build with the model now let's have a look at other areas where we can integrate into this for example we got here the bill of quantity with regard to this project as we are illustrate this in the previous tutorial uh, so when it comes to the piles and piling uh, we got this one the sub subsection and the major heading uh, general heading a comment and the uh, price item so how do we get the, the this price item we go back to the model we got now and in this uh, model we go to the section where it is the quantification in the quantification section we we work out uh, sorry the quantification section let me make this one bigger and the quantification section we got uh, this information available to us which i uh, looked into it and uh, for example we got the count here is the number of the piles which we are interested in 27 numbers and we got uh, even we got that elevation on top elevation to the, the bottom here the volume for each pile and the piling length so in this instance we are interested in the number for our price item this number here 27 so we go to the bill of quantity and we write down write down in here basically uh, as simple as that we write down let's say here 27 yeah so 27 pile that's that's the the, the item for the quantity for the number of the piles but how about how about the concrete, the volume of concrete, and the the, the rebar section? Then it's a sim similar thing. Is we go back to the model, and in the quantification section, which we let's say uh, go back now to it. In the quantification section, we can find out about all the other details of the reinforcement volume, and uh, in particular, you know, I prefer. 
I prefer the the weight or the reinforcement, which is in kilograms or uh, sometimes in, in tonnage as well. So, for example, we got I in this in this model, I only reinforced two piles because the more you reinforce piles, uh, the more the, the the program will be much much more heavy, heavier to be used. So uh, usually you just reinforce one or two, and then you got the number of the piles. Uh, you got the number of the piles, and in that in the port port, and then you can always uh, multiply the number of the piles with the tonnage. Uh, now, how about the the volume of the horizon coming out by casting in place uh, both piles? The the volume of the horizon is is basically is determined by the number by the number of the piles. Uh, Penetrated into the ground. Uh, that that's excluding the excavation which taking place from the existing level into the commencing level, which I will come to it just just in a moment. So, for example, as you go back now, the schedule of the of the piles, and in this schedule here, we have got the the volume, the total volume of the piles. And the total volume of the piles is basically it's what is the the muck is being is being uh, displaced from from uh, from from the from the ground. But when it comes to the excavation from the existent level to the commencing level, then we go back into a, a different a different calculations, where where in this in this uh, instant we have got let's have a look now we have got the the surfaces here. And and as I will show you now, what I mean by we got two surfaces. We got one surface is for the commencing commencing work, and the other surface is the existing. And if we look at it in 3D, it will comes to us clear that what is the both of them mean. It's one one surface, and the other surface is there. So to work out the volume, uh, which which is which is uh, between the two surfaces is basically is uh, you got you got the two surfaces and the volume between them will determine the the volume. So now let's say we have another volume there, and then we got the existing surface, and then we got now is the commencing surface uh, surface, and and in between them you end up with the volume of 415 cubic meters for that's that's the cut uh, which is which is basically it's it's the excavation and if you wanted to represent this schedule you can always put it there somewhere there and it is it is shows all the details available there but what we are looking into now it is it is basically is a cut of 415 cubic meters so if we go back to the bill quantity and as, as it shows here and then we look into the item where indicate the excavation is not exceeding two meters and then then you input the cubic meters here which is 100 and 415 cubic meters so now i have illustrated how i integrated the with the model the setting out, the as built, quantification of the pile volume, reinforcement, the rebar, the, the any any other information is available, all in one file. And uh, one more thing we need to look into before before we uh, end this tutorial is some final details about how we are gonna present this to the client or to any member of the team. By looking at uh, one single sheet, which represent all the information available uh, in the in the model, and we're including the quantification, the as built, the details of the rebar, all the all the um, uh, all the uh, all the views. So all of it is in in, in one sheet, uh, representing uh, the the model what we got here. 
So let's have a have a closer look into into what we see here. And for example, for example, the enforcement, the the rebar, as I, I indicated earlier on in the tutorial, uh, what you need is you need maybe it is just uh, one one uh, you you reinforce one pile and the rest are if they are all identical, will be looking into it as as uh, all the all the, the same. And uh, so that's the example. And then you got the the table here, which represent what we looked into it: the number of the pile, the volume of the concrete uh, being uh, casted, and then other other details. Uh, let's say here the num the reinforcement volume and the, the weight, with 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 many many sections here showing the piles here, for instance, and here. Uh, this is this is where where we had the uh, ob the obstruction, and uh, this pile couldn't penetrate anymore. So, so we had to be uh, instructed to to get additional piles instead. And uh, it's it's up to you how you how you organize these sheets. And but at the end of the day, this this these records are available for for everyone. And uh, so you you got all different integrating all different um, informations into one single file one single project well i hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and uh, you are benefited from it thank you